coming up on show 400. A nice round number for a nice new car launch. Very occasionally we dedicate an entire EV News Daily to one particular car when they do a big launch. And today we're going to do that. It's a special one. It's the Polestar Two. Well, good morning, good afternoon, or good evening. In fact, wherever you are in the world, welcome to the show today, Wednesday, 27th of February edition. It's Martin Lee here, been through all of the EV news and decided there's just one big story that you and I need to talk about today, and that is all about the Polestar 2. But I've picked out all the details to hopefully save you time, so just give you the information you need to know about this car. If, once again, the podcast sounds slightly different, Today, it's because we are on vacation, on holiday at the moment, and we are in on the island of Malta, somewhere called Melia, or Meliha, which is in the north of the island, and I'm currently sitting on the balcony, and for the first time in three days, the sun is out. It's about 16 degrees today, so we're recording this at the little table on the balcony, overlooking the bay. I can see the water. It looks really bluey green today, but that's just because the sky is blue for the first time, and some beautiful old architecture, a church that's about a bazillion years old, and uh, maybe if I'm quiet, you can hear the bells ringing at half past the hour. This isn't an architecture podcast. This is about EVs. Thank you, as always, to myev.com for helping me make this show. If you were in the USA and you thought, right, that's it, we're going to buy an EV this year, uh, check out myev. If you are selling yours, check out myev.com. And if you're just learning about EVs, if you are EV curious for now, well, you know the destination to go to. Hey, we have a new member of the Patreon gang, by the way. I always say thank you at the beginning of the show because I'm so grateful. I'm not going to leave it to the end. I want to start the show by thanking a new producer, Frank. Now, Frank Asada joins us on Patreon. Oh, if you're a Patreon supporter, by the way, and you're listening to this on the day I publish this podcast, they do their billing on the first. So you've got if you want to cancel it, if you want to pause it, if you want to think, right, I've done enough now, I'll you know, maybe come back or I'm going to support a different podcast uh, or something or just cancel it, then you've got, make sure you log into your account and do that. Of course, you are very welcome to carry on uh, your support, goes without saying. Let's kick off then with the official blurb of the Volvo slash Polestar 2. Polestar 2 is the first fully electric car to compete in the marketplace that sits in the same segment as the Tesla Model 3. The range starting at a guide price of 39,900 euros and that does put the base price right up against the Model 3 mid-range. However, for the first year of production, for the first 12 months, the guide price is going to be a little bit more. Scratch that. The guide price is going to be quite a lot more. The launch edition is 59,900 euros. Well, Polestar 2 is definitely a premium car. It's a premium five-door fastback. It's got two electric motors. It's tied to a 78-kilowatt-hour battery, and that targets it very much at the long-range premium sedan market. Here's a clip from the online launch. The very core of Polestar 2's battery is a pouch cell. That is a flat cell that makes it easy to build up multiple layers in a very compact way. And we are talking here lots of layers, and lots and lots of layers. 324 cells we condense into Polestar 2's long-range battery. Now, because this is the most crucial criteria a modern premium electric car has to deliver on, range. With a target of 500 kilometer range, you can rely on this battery power in Polestar 2. So this car is based on Volvo's uh, adaptable architecture. It's called the Compact Modular Architecture Platform, the CMA platform. There are 27 modules in the battery pack integrated into the floor, and that contributes to the rigidity of the chassis as well, and it improves the car's noise, the vibration, and the harshness, the NVH levels. If you see uh, sort of automotive people talking about NVH, that's what it means. Uh, road noise has been reduced as well, thanks to a traditional chassis thanks to the EV drivetrain. So 
that's the basic stats on the car then. But what about getting some juice inside it? Polestar is setting up a collaboration and many collaborations actually to give Polestar 2 owners easy and hassle-free access to the world's largest public charging networks. Here's a clip. First, we make sure that you get really far with one charge, offering a high battery capacity in the Polestar 2. Second, in Polestar 2, it is really easy to find the charging stations nearby. With the full integration of the infrastructure into the navigation and an intuitive search functionality. Thirdly, we are working together with the major players developing the fast growing charging infrastructure to offer easy access for you, our customers, to the charging stations along your way. So let's get on to the subjective stuff first of all, and that's the styling. The styling is more angular than perhaps some people would like. I think, look, this is subjective. This is beauty is in the eye of the beholder, and I think this is chuffing beautiful. I think this is a wonderful looking car. I think the best design at the moment in the mainstream, uh, mainstream automotive sector is pretty much coming out of Volvo and Polestar anyway. I think they may just make for my European tastes, fabulous looking cars. Okay, the criticism that I've seen online so far, it has a grill. Well, yes, so does the Tesla Model 3, but the grill is tucked away down low. Yes, this has a traditional grill, like you would see on a fossil car. Yes, EVs need some air cooling for certain bits. No, they don't need the big grill, but look, this is a car that looks like a fossil car. And for many people, that's gonna be a big part of why they like the look of the car. Does it need to be that big? I don't know. Should it be that big? I don't know. Uh, keyboard warriors are on, online saying, oh, you know, they've missed a trick. Well, look, I'm, I'm pretty sure they spent more than just five minutes thinking about the front of the car. Personally, it suits my taste. Could it be more aerodynamic? Maybe, but look, I don't want to get too tied up in this, but that's I've seen a big criticism today online of people saying, I like the back, like the side, don't like the front. Look, I think from every angle, this thing is just beautiful, but that's the subjective side of it as well. What about under the skin? Well, all-wheel drive, like I said, two motors. Electric powertrain in the Polestar 2 is producing 300 kilowatts. What's that in old money? 408 brake horsepower. This is a very premium, very fast, very well-specced car. It does 0 to 60, or 0 to 62 actually, because they gave it in kilometers per uh, uh, hour, 0 to 100 kmh. Uh, the acceleration time, all they'll say is less than five seconds, which is not too specific, but it's okay, less than five seconds, we like that. Okay, so again, Tesla fans, people who want to knock anything are out there saying, well, the Model 3 will do it in half the time. Yes, okay, if you spend a huge amount of money on a Model 3, then yes, you can get one that will be insanely fast. However, why can't we just all be happy that there's an amazing EV been announced today, been released, that's going to be on the market before you know it, that's got incredible performance, less than five seconds, not to 62. That is heading towards lose your license territory. Anyway, let's move on. Uh, Polestar 2 is one of the first cars in the world to embed in the infotainment system the Android system. The whole infotainment is Android, and we know that the Android backbone is going to be really solid, really adaptable. The apps for it are going to be very familiar, and it's just going to feel like a car for the 21st century. Unlike some new cars, you still get the infotainment system and not Teslas I'm talking here, but other cars, you still think, oh, this just feels old-fashioned after you've been inside, um, you know, an advanced EV. So great news. They're using Android for that, and it does all the vehicle functions as well inside that system. Embedded Google services, things like Google Assistant, Google Maps, and I live my life on Google Maps. i got friends that swear by Waze. Personally, I love Google Maps. If it says I'm arriving at a certain time, it's, it's so accurate these days because of all the crowdsourced data and everyone else using Google Maps. It's got support for EVs and uh, Google Play Store as well. It'll tell you where the charges are. And the Polestar 2 is now available for ordering, but only available for ordering online. And this is interesting as well. This is a new way that car makers, auto makers, are going to be interacting with their customers. And it's, it's a direct-to-customer relationship. They're not going to cut out the dealership model 
entirely. I'll tell you more about that in a moment. But more and more car makers, again, as we move into a, you know, like a, I call it the Facebook world, like the, you know, the, the modern world of needing to interact closely with your customers, whether that's on social media, whether that is direct mail, whether that is the buying experience. If you can have total control over that whole process, then you're not going to get a bad dealership experience because, well, there aren't any. But anyway, I'll come back to uh, there are There are going to be in store, obviously, but I'll come back to that in a moment. The guide purchase price for the launch version, as I say, 59900 That's 60,000 euros. And there will be subscription pricing. A big question on everyone's mind. Yes, Polestar will go down the subscription model where they are allowed to do it. And yes, some of those U.S. car, uh, the, the US car dealers in certain states are fighting subscription-based modeling for cars because they don't like it. They want to fight and they want to ensure that regulations are put in place uh, that prevent this coming to where you live. But if they can do it by subscription, where you're listening around the world, they want to. Pre-orders are open now. Do you want one? Go on then. Polestar 1's the website. Sorry, polestar.com is the website. Uh, production of the Polestar 2 begins early next year in 2020. We're about uh, eight months away from that. They're going to make them in China for all global markets. Does that mean they're going to be low quality? Of course not. Uh, the Made in China badge these days is nothing to be ashamed of. Uh, they're going to make them in both left and right hand drive for all global markets to begin with. That's great news. Of course, I'm in the UK normally, and right hand drive is uh, pretty rare. Uh, what it's, it's, it's the UK, it's Australia, it's where else? <laughs> Malta, where I am at the moment, they have right hand drive. Uh, but it's not, uh, it's not high up many automakers' lists. Initial launch markets are China. USA, Canada, Belgium, Germany, Netherlands, Norway, Sweden, and the UK. So that is the initial pitch on the car. What do you reckon? How are you feeling after hearing that? It's got great range. It's got great battery. Cells come from a real quality supplier as well. Styling is good. They're going to make them in good numbers. Let's talk more about that then. Let's look, look at some of the comment that's coming in. Let's kick off with Dominic at Inside EVs. Now, InsideEVs.com says the Polestar 2 is the first real offering from the new Volvo sub-brand Polestar. Yes, there's the Polestar 1. They're only making 500 of them. Base price, $155,000. It's a plug-in hybrid. It's got a massive fossil engine. That's not going to suit everybody. I mean, it's a brutally fast car. But really, it's, it's, it's their first foray into it. What Dominic calls an hors d'oeuvre to the Polestar 2's main course. I like that. Well, Tesla famously sells its products over the internet and through small company-owned boutique shops. Uh, the people that who you meet uh, in those Tesla stores aren't desperate to sell you one because they're not on those big commissions like everybody else. They want to educate you. And if you want to buy a Tesla at the end of that experience, that's all, that's all well and good. And if not, that's okay as well. Polestar is taking the same approach. They are going to be sticking, though, with franchise dealerships, and that is one going to be one difference. The stores aren't going to carry inventory, though. They're going to be staffed as well. The Polestar stores are staffed by non-commissioned personnel. They are there to educate and inform and not do the hard sell and, oh, I'll do you a deal. Do you buy it now and I'll do you a deal. If you come back tomorrow, you can't do the same price. I mean, I hate. I hate all that. I love buying. I just hate being sold to through desperation, if that makes any sense. I love the buying experience. You deal with a great salesperson and you really enjoy that experience. I love it more than anybody else. I love, I love, love buying stuff uh, when that experience is nice and they help you and it's about education and you're making the right choice. You feel comfortable. Something in your gut just feels right. So this isn't against being sold to. This is just 98% of all car dealers out there I've never had a great experience with. So, as well as this, the brand is putting plenty of info online to inform customers. One difference, though, the Polestar will offer cars as a subscription service. That is the flat monthly rate. So, the incidentals, apart from electricity, are pretty much covered. So, I think, I think that even includes insurance and it, variable timing. So, you have it for a year. You can swap it in, swap it out. It, look, many people do it with their phones these days and everything else in their life. They don't have... Movie collections, they have Netflix. They haven't got CD collections, they've got Spotify. And lots of people like this this subscription-based model these days of not really owning, not really owning something. Uh, maybe you are different, but maybe you are well up for subscribing to a car. I don't know how I feel about it yet. I'm, st I'm, st I'm still sort of living with that. I, I like owning a car, but anyway. 
As for the Inside EVs forum, I've picked out one comment that's really, really nice. I like this. Winter Bear is one of the users on the Inside EVs forum, and he says, I have a Model 3, and I hope the Volvo Polestar 2 hits it out of the park. More competition with fossil cars is awesome. And that's it, right? It's a rising tide floating all boats. I don't get the people online today thinking it's a fight between EV makers. It's not, right? This is another great car that's coming that's fully electric powered. As for Simon at Teslarati, his comment on this is that the Polestar 2 is impressive. The estimated production, which is 50,000 units a year, is a fraction of the Model 3's output, he says. The vehicle provides a great balance between price and features to make it a compelling purchase. In a way, the Polestar 2 is more of a threat to premium gas cars than any other. Everyone's drawing parallels to the Model 3 today, saying, oh, it's a Tesla beater, Tesla killer, whatever. Simon says, actually, no, this is a fossil killer. And if you're going to buy a Model 3, then you're going to buy a Model 3, actually. This widens the net of people who are going to buy an EV. The Polestar 2's base price is $45,500. When you can eventually get one, that's equivalent to the mid-range Model 3, but that won't be for the first year, though. The launch edition is $63,000 on the conversion. And again, that's very similar to the Model 3 Performance, $61,000. That's all before incentives, by the way. I'll put a link to all those articles in the show notes and even the official Polestar press release if you are interested in reading the full-on blurb. So what do you reckon? What are your thoughts after hearing all that? I'd love to hear from you. You can email me. The address is hello at evnewsdaily.com if you want to use the YouTube or Facebook comments. What are your thoughts on this? Excited or not? Either way, on the specs, 78 kilowatt hour battery, two motors, real great performance. What do you think? Should it be available sooner for less money? What do you reckon? Let me know your thoughts. While you're doing that, also have a think about this week's question of the week. Uh, let me know your thoughts. Thanks to myev.com on our question of the week. Where did you or where will you buy an EV from? Let's make a list of all the best places and markets and dealers and companies out there who are making EV driving a pleasure and we can shine a spotlight on the best ones. Thank you very much to 197 patrons of the podcast. You keep me going. Uh, there are 399 episodes online, of course. This is number 400 online for free. Subscribe for new ones, and you can get them first and free and automatically. Oh, there's so much going on. I didn't even get a chance today to talk about the Honda Urban EV, which is now called the e-prototype. We didn't get a chance to talk about Elon Musk's tweet, which says, 2 p.m. Pacific time, Thursday, big announcement. What is that? Is that the Model Y? Is that... Details of the Model Y. Is it new supercharging? Is it a refresh for the S and the X? Nobody knows. Could it be a SpaceX thing? Didn't even get a chance to talk about that in detail. It'll be on tomorrow morning's podcast when you download it. In the meantime, come and say hi on the socials by searching EV News Daily. Do have a wonderful day. I certainly will, as the sun has finally come out and the sky has finally turned blue. Until the podcast edition for Thursday, I will catch you tomorrow. In the meantime, remember, there's no such thing as a self-charging hybrid.